last night about the first time that I looked at porn and discovered what porn was uh, when I was about the age of 12. Um, so it is quite graphic for anyone that's uncomfortable or young. Um, but it, I feel like it has to be said, so I'm going to say it. Sex was like many other beginnings, unexpected but probably quite regular. They tried desperately to keep you protected from sex, didn't they? Protected but neglected to be told the facts about what you suspected so your mistakes go undetected and they don't ever really get corrected and you find yourself completely misdirected because of what you're learning from. I thought love and sex would be more connected and that's definitely not what I expected. You first hear about sex with a rumour, a whisper, learning small snippets from an older brother or a friend's sister. You hear the word occasionally being blurted out but no one explains exactly what it's all about until you find that jackpot. That pot of gold, you start to realise that this is so much more than what you've been told, whatever the jackpot in your family may be, vibrators, loops, condoms, or God forbid, you actually see your parents during sexual intercourse. <laughs> but every family has a sexist social source of knowledge, and mine, mine was porn. <laughs> what are they doing? Is this how I was born? Why is that daddy putting his willy in that mummy? Why has that girl got white stuff all over her tummy? And why has that cheerleader been naughty? And why is her teacher going potty on her face? <laughs> ah, so sex isn't just a loving embrace between two people who love each other very much. It's much more than that. You actually have to... That's disgusting. I would quickly put the magazines back in their place, rushing back to my room, feeling guilty and disgrace, and I was lucky that I never got caught sneaking peeks at the magazines that my father had bought. They say curiosity kills a cat, and I'm fully aware of that, but it wasn't a cat anymore. It was a pussy. Your bum wasn't your bum, it was your back door. The, the front bum, the place that you peed from, became a place for a man to store his cum. It became a hole that needed to be filled. That's if you ever wanted your man to be thrilled, which you told me I did. So I continued into adolescence as most people do, leaving behind the world and the princess that I knew. Stepping into a world where I lost my footing, waiting around to be an adult was a boring, so I started putting myself out there. And you know what? I didn't seem to care. I was angry at the world for not giving me enough. I wasn't being myself. I was trying to be tough. I would find myself knees dirty, pulling up my pants and looking in the mirror and desperately wanting implants because I thought that that was my role. When I was a teenager, sex was the only control I had over my life, then I was convinced that the ultimate goal and the only way to fill that empty hole was with a cock. And it came as quite a shock when I felt nothing. Nothing. And I know it is rare for a woman of my generation to be exposed to hardcore at such an early age, but what's most worrying for now on the stage that porn isn't only on the paper pages of magazines that are hard to get. It is everywhere. It's 12% of the internet, 25% of web engine requests a day, and I'm so worried what of that is simply down to child's play, child's curiosity that they don't quite understand. Stepping into a world of unknown and dangerous lands. Thank you. Are you thankful that you got to go to school? Are you sick of people judging? 
judging you by your size, but men look at your boobs and not at your eyes, then yes, you're a feminist. Congratulations, now get off your high words and channel your frustrations. And fuck the stranger that calls me darling or pet, do I look like a dog, should I go to the vet? And fuck the father who takes his son to Amsterdam, not to smoke weed, not to go on a tram, he takes his son to lose his virginity. Not a great example of the male-female affinity, but most of all, most of all, fuck me. Fuck me for going along with it all, fuck me for making other women feel small, and fuck me for always knowing better, but still going out and buying that fucking designer sweater. And fuck me for turning my back on my morals I chose, for spending all my money on makeup and clothes. And fuck me for not speaking my mind because I can't be bothered and I don't want to be unkind. And fuck me for not listening to my mind. My sense of self and satisfaction is always left behind, behind the pruning and the plucking and the fake tan and the sucking. And fuck the long, pointless fucking that I got nothing from. Fuck me for being convinced not to use a condom. And fuck me for doing everything that I resent. Fuck me for giving that man the consent to fuck me over, to be in control, to make me feel worthless one half of one whole, so here I am. A young woman standing in front of you all, standing at five foot six inches, but feeling pretty small. I'm trying to explain to you how I feel inside, and I don't know if it's worked, but at least I tried. I'm asking for a solution to help me get me out of this mess. How can I feel strong without having to undress? How can I start realising what I'm worth based on something other, not just my appearance and my ability to give birth? I'm so afflicted, restricted and conflicted by all the things that I'm addicted to. The things that make me feel good inside are damaging me and my sense of pride. Am I allowed to be a feminist and still feminine? Am I still allowed to allow the estrogen that runs through my veins, my head, my heart, a chemical reaction that feels so much part of me? And when you look at me, you may not first see the politics that run right in my hand, the spirit that drives me round the bend and the passion and anger that fills my bones and my voice. But trust me, behind this look, I have made my choice. Thank you very much. <laughs>